The following video is a product of the Cleveland Institute of Electronics. Working with printed circuit boards, notice your printed circuit board has two sides. One side has prints showing where the parts go. Many circuit boards have this, but not all. The other side has strips of copper foil, sometimes called traces. These traces serve as a conducting paths for electrically connecting the components which are mounted on the other side of the board. Before actually building the siren project, first practice soldering. Practice removing and resoldering components from an old radio or TV or some other electronic device. Good soldering techniques take practice. Cold soldering joints are one of the major problems that occur with people who are inexperienced in soldering. Cold soldering joints occur when the surface of the trace or pad is not wetted correctly. This could be caused by two things. First, insufficient heat was applied when soldering. The surface of the trace or pad was dirty. Your pad should be shiny. If they are not, you need to clean them before soldering. There are two quick ways to clean traces or pads. The first is use a pencil eraser and clean the surface of the pad you will be soldering. Brush off the eraser that stays on the board. Make sure the board is clean from that. Use a fine steel wool as the second way and you clean the surface of the pad you will be soldering. Make sure the metal strands from the steel wool have been removed from the board as well as the work surface or area. If this is not done, when you place all the parts in the board and solder them, the metal strands that are remaining can short out components and ruin all the work you had just done by burning up the board. Cold soldering joints can very often cause intermittent connections. This means you will lose conductivity at that point and your circuit will stop working correctly and possibly shut down and will not work at all. Fortunately for you, it is not hard to learn to solder correctly. Beginners need to do the following. First, practice. This is the most important thing. Without practice, you will not become pro proficient when soldering. Do not hurry your connections. Make sure your iron is cleaned and tinned correctly. Make sure you are using the correct iron for the job. Too little heat can cause bad connections. Too much heat can cause the solder to overheat and not wet the surface properly, as well as damage the circuit board and your components. When you're working with splices, that's what we're going to do now, there's a variety of splices that can be made with just a little bit of practice. We'll be demonstrating two permanent and two temporary splices. Starting with permanent splices, you have the end splice, or sometimes called the pigtail splice. And second, you have the Western Union splice, or sometimes called the inline splice. There are four steps to complete the end splice or the pigtail splice. It does not matter if you're using solid wire or if you're using stranded wire. First thing you have to do, whether you're using solid or stranded wire, is tin the wire. When tinning a solid wire, carefully strip about three quarters of an inch from the end. Make sure you do not nick the wire. Place in the hands-free device, sometimes called the helping hands. If the tip of the iron is dirty, clean it and retin it as we've described before. Place the iron at the bottom of the wire and the solder at the top of the wire, about midway down the wire. Make sure the tip of the iron is tinned. The solder should flow toward the heat. Move the solder toward the insulation, taking care not to melt the insulation. Then move the solder toward the end of the wire. The wire should now be a bright silver or the color of the solder. After you've done this, twist the wires together with a minimum of two full twists. Solder the twisted area together. Make sure to let the connection cool before moving it. Trim off the wires at the top that are not soldered. Normally you would use shrink tubing or electrical tape to cover your splice. All you need to do is heat it up and shrink it down on the connection, taking care not to melt it. What you do is you take your soldering iron. Sometimes you have to have a torch iron usually. Or you can use a heat gun. A heat gun looks like a hair blower or hair dryer that women use. 
you would have it on hot. You have to be careful if you have an actual heat gun that you do not melt the shrink tubing. But you run it across the shrink tubing and you'll watch it shrink. And you can do it on the top and then do it on the bottom. It's pretty quick. And it is secure as long as there is no wire showing. When you're tinning a stranded wire, you do the same as before. Carefully strip three quarters of an inch from the end, making sure not to nick or cut any of the strands. And then you twist the strands of the wires together to make it look like a solid wire. The rest of the steps are the same as when tinning a solid wire. The, when you're doing a pigtail splice with stranded wire, you're doing the same thing you did with the solid wire, except that you have to tin the stranded wire and make sure there are no strands sticking out. Make sure you tinned it and it's clean, shiny. Then you twist it together, two twists minimum, solder it, same as same steps as before, making sure that the soldering iron is on the bottom and the solder is on the top of the wire. And this tip is tinned. The solder should flow toward the heat, move the solder toward the insulation. Then after that's soldered, you move the solder toward the tip, then you're done. With the Western Union splice, it's sometimes called the inline splice, it's a little bit different. You prepare the wires as shown in the previous examples by stripping and tinning the wire. If you're using shrink tubing, you must cut the piece and place it on the wire before your connection. This will be very obvious to you after it's done, you'll see why we say that. Cross them in an X-type pattern. Twist the ends of the wires together, but you must make sure to twist one wire down first. You make one twist, and then you can do the other side and make a twist on that side. Some people prefer to twist one end down all the way and then twist the other end down all the way. Either way works. Then you take your needle nose around those pliers and twist the end of the wires down until they are smooth or even with the rest of the wire. You don't want any sharp edges sticking up. If the tip of the iron is dirty, clean it and retin it at this point. Solder the wire connection as we did before, starting about midway down the wire. Place your iron underneath the wire, touching the wire. Make sure the tip is tinned. If there's no solder on the tip of the tip, it's not going to heat the solder of the tin wires. Then you take the solder and put it at the top of the wire. The solder should flow toward the heat. Move the solder toward the insulation, taking care not to melt the insulation. Go right or go left, it doesn't matter. Then move the solder toward the other side, of, toward the insulation in the other direction. You should see the spirals of the twisted wire, and the wire should now be a bright silver color which is the color of the solder. Then you're going to use shrink tubing, but now the shrink tubing is on the end of the wire somewhere. It's in the middle. You have to pull it down and cover the area that all has been soldered. Make sure each end of the insulation has a little bit of that shrink tubing covering it as well so that when you shrink it down, that shrink tubing will not move and there's no chance if the wire gets moved that there'll be any open connections or you can use electrical tape. Next there are two temporary splices. You have the overlap splice also known as the parallel splice and you have the hook splice. The reason these are called temporary splices is normally temporary splices are just what they say, temporary. They're usually taken apart at a later time. Overlap splice also known as parallel splice is pretty simple. You prepare the wires as shown in a previous example. This means strip and tin the wire. Again, if the tip of the iron is dirty, clean it and retin it. Hold the wires side by side and solder them together. There are a few ways to hold the wires steady. The most common is place the wires in a hands-free device, also called the helping hands. You have the wires parallel to each other, close together or touching each other. Either way, it'll work. You solder the wires. Have the two wires side by side. You must hold the wire steady until the solder cools and hardens.
Normally, when you're doing this type of a splice, a parallel splice, you use electrical tape. Some people will use shrink tubing, and you use the shrink tubing as shown before, or cut the electrical tape about three quarters to an inch, and you wrap it around the open connection. The hook splice is the last temporary splice for today. You prepare the wires as shown again in the previous examples by stripping them, tinning them, and if the iron tip is dirty, clean it, retin it. Your iron sitting in your stand will get dirty just from the heat and the air. So it is important to clean and tin it every time before you use it. The difference with this type of connection is now you're going to snip a little bit of that three quarters of an inch of wire off. Usually you snip in maybe an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch off of it. Then you take and you make a small hook at the end of the wire with your round nose or needle nose pliers. You grab the wire maybe an eighth of an inch from the end with your needle nose pliers and you make the hook. Make a small hook and then you hook to both ends, you do the hook on both connections, both ends of the wire you want to connect. Then you hook the wires together and gently tighten the hooks for a slight mechanical connection. You're not clamping down on these. All you're doing is making a slight mechanical connection. Remember, this is going to only be a temporary connection. It's designed to be taken apart later. Hold the wire steady. There are a few ways to do that. One way is to put it in a hands-free device. The other way, have one end of the wire being held by something, whatever it's connected to. And then you apply pressure and tension on the second end of the wire. And then you can place that second end in a hands-free device or under the end of a needle nose pliers just to apply enough pressure just to hold it taut. Then you solder it as we did before. Make sure you solder evenly across the hooks. The hooks should be soldered and there should be no sharp edges sticking out. Normally you use electrical tape to cover your splice. Take about one half inch to one inch in length depending on the diameter of the wire and the area of the wrap you want it to connect snugly. Soldering terminals are commonly seen on potentiometers, slide switches, and terminal lugs. To prepare wires to work with soldering terminals, you have a couple different options. One is you prepare the wires as shown in the previous examples. Again, if the tip is dirty, clean and retin it. You always tin your wires first. If they are eyelets in the soldering terminals, like on many potentiometers, slide switches, and terminal lugs, you have to use a hook splice. So you make your hook at the end of the wire that you're soldering Connect it into the eyelet or the terminal lug. Gently tighten the hook for a slight mechanical connection. Solder the wire or connection as we did before. Move the solder over the eyelet or solder lug, taking care not to melt the wire's insulation. You must hold the wire steady. This is, there is not a strong mechanical connection, so it must be held steady as it cools. Sometimes you can give it a puff of air as soon as you remove the iron, and that'll harden it quick. Some switches and potentiometers do not have eyelets, but can be connected by using a parallel connection or an overlap splice. They can also be used, connected using a hook, but all you're going to do with the hook is wrap it around it and tighten the hook on the piece coming out of the potentiometer or switch. If you're using a parallel connection, overlap splice, you have to make sure both are tinned and then Put them together so they're parallel, touching the wire and the lug. Apply your heat, remove the iron, give it a puff of air to harden that. Make sure not to move the wire until it's cooled. The wire sh should be solid. The connection should be a brilliant or bright silver color with the outline of the wires visible beneath the solder. The solder should be blended into the lug and the wire and the whole connection should be smooth and shiny. That's it for today for 1404, working with printed circuit boards and some components. Thank you.